It has been a long time since you have seen me, has it not? What has life been like? Are you finally free? <laughs> oh, do not worry about me. This is not about me. It never was. It was always your story. Death is not so bad. I have been through worse. Dying is easy. Surviving is much more difficult. So do not worry about me. I would much prefer to hear that you are happy and free and living the life I never got to have. I have nothing to tell you because I am not really here. I am only a memory. Time has moved on. Have you moved with it? Look at the clock. Time has moved on. Look at the clock. Have you moved with it? Look at the clock. I am only a memory. Time has moved on. Look at the clock. I am not really here. Dying is easy. Look at the clock. Have you moved with it? Look at the clock. Look at the clock, Raven. Raven? 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 Raven, are you listening? I understand that you may not want to be here, but psychological treatment was one of the conditions of your continued eligibility for witness protection services. It's easy to write it off as another piece of government red tape. <sighs> but given your circumstances, I believe our sessions are still necessary, even four years after the incident in San Sequestro. Very well. Let's not spend too much time focusing on the details of past events today. First, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your present state. Do you think the medication is helping? Oh, Raven, please be reasonable. I never said that some pills could change your past or bring him back from the dead. Nothing can do that. But since we've adjusted your dose, have you had any decrease in the frequency and severity of your flashbacks? That's good. Even a small amount of progress is a step in the right direction. After the trial against Para M is over, you're going to have to go back and live a normal life, get a normal job, and go back to using your legal name. It's perfectly fine to accept that even something as seemingly simple as living a normal life can be a tremendous challenge for someone who's gone through what you have. Well, normal being a relative term here, compared to your past as a mercenary. Now, during our last session, you mentioned you were experiencing very intense recurring dreams. Are you ready to go into detail about them? I'm listening. And in these nightmares where Crow dies, do the details match your memory of the events, or is there anything different about them? Hmm. And what about these nightmares where you die and Crow lives? How do they make you feel? I beg your pardon? Do you mean to say it's only a nightmare when you dream of him dying? Judging by the answers you gave on our most recent psychological survey, you don't have any signs of suicidal thoughts. Why then do you not experience fear or distress at the dreams where you die and he lives? Is, is there some emotional catharsis to it? Hmm. You only sleep well when you have those nightmares. I mean, dreams where you die in his place. Hmm. Do you think these dreams had any relation to the other recurring dreams you had? Here I wrote down the description you made of them. You said you were experiencing recurring dreams where you saw a crow fighting an impossible battle against an eagle in the sky to protect its nest. I believe you described the crow as being unusually large and with wings that glowed a bright neon color, but only when the sun hit its feathers just right. The crow defeats the eagle, but dies of its injuries flying back to the nest and never makes it home. Do you think these dreams are about him? I'm asking you because you would know better than I. Psychoanalytic dream analysis is outdated pseudoscience from an era of Freud and Jung. 
I can't interpret your dreams for you, but they can be a reflection of what might be on your mind. Hmm. Tell me, have you ever heard of the term survivor's guilt? Different people experience it in different ways. Your case is unique because you didn't simply survive a random tragedy. But you still have to remember, you are not to blame. You may feel guilt or betrayal by doing something as innocent as simply allowing yourself to be happy. This is common among people experiencing survivor's guilt. You remember his last words to you, don't you? Raven? No, it's okay. Don't apologize. You don't have to be afraid to cry. This is a safe place. Are you ready to talk? I have a prescription for you. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not another medication. I want you to try and experience something new that you think could make you happy. It could be a new activity you've never tried. It could be something as simple as talking to someone new. It's common for people suffering from post-traumatic stress to lose curiosity for new things. But this only keeps you thinking of the past. I'm saying this because I have some concerns. I don't think you've ever mentioned any plans you have for your future, except for the few times that you've entertained the idea of returning to your family in Chicago after the trial is over. I want you to find a reason to think about tomorrow. But for that to happen, you need to find one. Therapy alone can't do that for you, neither can medication. This part is in your hands. Thank you, Raven. I'll check in on you again next month. Best of luck. And in other news, the lengthy trial against the Paramilitary Enforcement Services Corporation, better known as Para-M, continues. The trial has been continually extended after ongoing legal discovery, and has been further complicated by the fact that the CEO cannot testify after being murdered by one of his own mercenaries. Plaintiffs claim that the mercenary codenamed the Neon Barbarian was justified in his use of lethal force, and that his testimony would have brought the trial to an end. Unfortunately, the Neon Barbarian was not able to testify after the San Sequestro PD killed him. Welcome back to KGWA, bringing you the best music news and views since 1951. It's time for our 30 minutes of commercial free music. Up next, we're going back to the 80s with this classic by Hall and Notes. on I don't know you just pulled into my driveway then start screaming and smashing the shit out of your radio don't you go yelling at me I didn't do shit the fuck is wrong with you are you crazy get out of my driveway I don't know you go get the fuck out crazy bitch
Oh, is this your house? Oh, no, I didn't come to the wrong door. I just wanted to see if anyone was home because I lost something in your backyard and I wanted to see if I could get it back. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't in your backyard or anything, I promise. I'm not a burglar. Okay, technically it wasn't me who lost it. It was, um, it was a bird. Um, actually, you would think I was really, really weird if I explained it. I mean, I am weird, but we just met, so, you know, manners. Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Ivan. I live across the street on 2150. I think I've seen you before, actually. Oh, yes, thank you. Don't worry, I'll make it quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is actually really embarrassing. <coughs> Hi, kitty. Oh, um, I'm looking for a piece of, uh, I guess, uh, invention? <laughs> I'm not like a scientist or anything. I mean, I wanted to be one when I was a kid, but I didn't have the math scores for it, you know? It's like a bird feeder, but not really. Okay, so it's really more like an elaborate mechanical puzzle with a little pile of nuts and seeds and mealworms and other treats that birds like at the end. It's kind of a game I play with birds. My daughter loves watching them solve the puzzles and get the treat at the end. Birds are actually a lot smarter than most people think. <clears throat> um, am I talking too much about birds? Oh, thank God. My friends keep telling me that the reason I'm still single is because I keep scaring women away with bird facts. <laughs> Not that I'm here to get a date or anything. I'm just here for my bird puzzle. <laughs> and maybe to make a new friend. We've been neighbors for uh, how long? I don't think we've ever properly met. No way. Your name is Raven? <laughs> no, I think that's really cool. I'm just trying not to get too excited about it. No, I think that's awesome. My daughter is named after a bird, too. I named her Paloma. It means dove in Spanish. I snuck that one right under my ex-wife's nose. Probably the most devious moment of my entire life, if we're being honest. Oh, there it is. Let me grab it. Oh, this thing? Uh, this part is like a tube, and uh, the string there connects to a sliding piece of plastic that opens up a hatch. But to move the string, the birds need to figure out how to push a stick that's thin enough to fit through this hole to move the string aside. Oh yeah, they totally can figure it out. Uh, not all of them, though. Some birds are smarter than others. It's uh, mostly crows that can solve this puzzle. That caught your interest. But yeah, crows are smart. Some of the smartest, actually. Most people see them as just these dumb, wild animals. Some people even think that they're scary, but they're actually very intelligent and affectionate animals. They can even form bonds with humans, if you're patient enough, that is. Um, yeah, so thank you for letting me in. I know I wasn't exactly invited, but you were a good host nonetheless. Hold on, it's my pager. Let me check it. Oop. That's my ex-wife's number. Um, it might be important. It's probably about the kindergarten we're enrolling our daughter in. Do you mind if I use your house phone really quick? Thank you. Hello, it's Ivan. Hi, sweetie. You paged me all by yourself? <laughs> You're such a big girl. Don't you worry about that, Paloma. I'm sure Mommy will pick a school close enough where you can see both of us. Oh, you want to talk to Fish in Purple? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not with them right now. Daddy is at, uh... Daddy is at a friend's house right now. But they did have a message for you. Fish says... <whistles> and Purple says... <laughs> I don't know what that means either. <laughs> You'll just have to learn bird language so you can tell Daddy what it means. <laughs> okay, Paloma. Daddy has to go now. But you take care. I love you.
Thank you. Sorry, I hope it wasn't awkward standing there while I talked on the phone. Oh, yeah, I do have to go, though. I have to do some after-hours work today. <laughs> no, 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 I don't work at an office. I, uh, I work at an outpost. I'm a forest ranger. Well, actually, not really. Forest rangers work for the state parks. I work for a wildlife tour company. <laughs> Technically, my job title is Woodland Conservation Surveyor, but nobody has any idea what I'm talking about when I say that, so... I just tell people that I'm a forest ranger, even though it's not exactly true. <laughs> Excuse me? You didn't take me for a forest ranger? <laughs> okay, look, not all of us look like rugged lumberjacks. I mean, I do have to keep in shape for my job. But I've never said no to a slice of homemade pie either. Alright, well, it was nice meeting you. The call of the wild beckons. Um, maybe we can meet up again sometime. I'd invite you over to see the nocturnal animals, but I don't think it's socially acceptable to invite someone into a dark forest right after you meet them. <laughs> um, I'll see you around, Raven. As riots continue to spread across the West Coast, the National Guard may have to... Esmeralda! Tu nunca estuvistes enamorada de mí! Siempre fue mi hermano! Mi gemelo! Hector. Welcome back to Cooking with Shuby! Say hello, Shuby! <coughs> That's right, Shuby! Today we're baking a blueberry pie! Everyone at home, get your recipe books out! For those of you who have the ingredients, feel free to join in and cook along with me! <coughs> Of course, and with Shuby. For this recipe, you'll need blueberries, puff pastry, sugar, lemon zest, cornstarch, eggs, creme, cinnamon, and all spice. If you don't have all those ingredients, that's fine! We can always improvise! First, let's start with the filling. Pour your berries into a saucepan with sugar, water, and lemon zest. Hold on, I'll get the door in one second. Oh, hello Raven. Long time no see. It's been what, two whole days? <laughs> I was starting to worry that you had forgotten all about me. To what do I owe this visit? Oh, this is for me? What is it? Oh my god, I know a homemade blueberry pie when I see one. You made this for me? Thank you so much! <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have told you my weakness. Two days later and you're already using my kryptonite against me. Well, how did it come out? You didn't try any? Raven, I can't possibly eat this all on my own. And to let you go to all the trouble of baking this without even having a taste? I could never. Wanna come inside? I could get us some plates and uh, we could share it. Come on in. I'll show you to my kitchen. Here, have a seat. A slice of pie for you. And... An extra large slice for me. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist. Oh, in that cage? Those are fish in purple. They're very friendly. You can say hi to them if you like. My daughter named them. They're lovebirds. They can die of sadness if their mate dies. Did you know that? It's sad, but sort of romantic. Purple was a widow when we found her. The pet store didn't know what to do with her. When I explained to my daughter that lovebirds can die from loneliness, she nearly cried. I didn't have the heart to leave that bird alone, so I found her an eligible bachelor and we named him Fish. 
<laughs> they look happy now, don't they? And now, without any further ado, I think I'll indulge myself in this culinary masterpiece. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. God damn, Raven. I... Oh my god, sorry, sorry. Excuse my language. <laughs> this is just a really good pie. <laughs> Are you a professional pastry chef or something? There is no way that was your first time ever baking a pie. Are you kidding me? This is great. All right. Well, if you're not a chef, then what is it you do for work? It's a secret, then. Are you a spy? Will you have to kill me if you tell me? Not exactly. <laughs> okay, I'll take that answer. I like a little mystery. I mean, I never shut up, so if someone else is the silent type, then, uh, things, I don't know, cosmically balance out or something. Um, yeah, I remember when I offered to invite you to the outpost. Why? Uh, did you want to take me up on it or something? Uh, yeah. The wildlife tours are closed today, but if you want to go over, I wouldn't mind. I love that forest. It's my favorite place to be. Most people here I'm from Arizona and think it's all desert and rocks, but they haven't seen Flagstaff. To me, it's the most beautiful place in the world. So you're in? <laughs> yes! All right, I'm so excited to show you. I'll give you the extra special behind the scenes tour with all the things we don't get to show the regular customers. Just let me finish this pie first. Here it is. Coconino National Forest. My outpost is right over there. There's all kinds of wild animals here. Pronghorns, horned toads, coyotes, uh, you might even see black bears and mountain lions here. Oh, and this is the only place in Arizona where you can spot bald eagles. Come, up here. I'll show you the lookout point. Welcome to my secret lookout tower. Over here I have my binoculars, uh, some bear spray just in case, and this. It's a Polaroid camera. I use it to snap pictures of animals when they come close to the outpost. Check out some of the pictures I took. Here's a little bear cub that tried climbing up the outpost. <laughs> and here is a picture of his mama dragging him away. Uh, here's a picture of a hawk that got really close to me. He was pretty brave. Oh, and, uh, that one's just a squirrel, but I thought it looked cool. It kind of looks like he's posing, doesn't it? Hmm. You know, come to think of it, I don't have any Polaroid pictures of myself. There usually isn't anyone here to take them, and, uh, I don't have many pictures of myself anyway. I feel so embarrassed asking people to take them. Yeah, sure, I'll pose for a shot. Should I stand here like this? All right, I'll pose. How should I do it? Okay, one leg up, one hand over my brow, looking into the horizon. <laughs> like a real mysterious forest ranger. Okay, are you ready? Wow, you made me look really handsome. <laughs> Wait, quick, hand me that camera. Did you see that? Over there. Yes, that crow, that huge crow. I think I recognize it. See, it has these like funny feathers that shine almost a neon color, but like only when the sun reflects on it just right. Yes, I've seen it before. I swear it looks exactly like the one that dropped my bird feeder into your backyard a couple days ago. But what's it doing all the way out here? It has to be miles away from its nest. Whatever. I'll think about it later. I need to get a picture of this thing. Wait, wait, wait. Hold still. I think it's taken a liking to you. I've never seen one just land on someone's shoulder like that.
stay right there. I'm going to get my camera. I'm finally going to get a picture. All right. You hold still. And don't scare the crow. Do you remember what I told you? I wanted for you to fly far, far away from everything, to a new life. I wanted you to have all of the things that the world never let me have. A full life. A happy life. Oh, shoot. I need to put new film in the camera. Hold still. I don't want him to fly away just yet. <laughs> hmm. He has gentle eyes. I can sense that he is lonely, but kind. There is a smile in his voice. Do you hear it? My story is over, but yours is not. If I had a pen that could write fate, I would give it a happy ending. The pen is in your hand. I cannot write it for you. Until the next sunrise. Okay. Smile. There he goes. Fly high, Mr. Crow. <laughs> I wonder if he'll ever show up again. The photo's gonna take a minute to develop, but don't worry. It's a good picture. You look beautiful. <clears throat> um, you look good. Are you okay, Raven? You look like you have a lot on your mind. I'm not gonna pry, don't worry. Take all the time you need. What next? Uh, anything, I guess. The great outdoors is right here at our fingertips. There's the lake, the mountains, the woods, the trails. I mean, actually, <laughs> there's like a hundred secret beautiful places that I've never actually gotten to show anyone. I'd like to show them to you. Um, <clears throat> that is, uh, I mean, if you want me to show them to you. Come with me. I know just where to start. I fell in love again. All things go. All things go. Drove to Chicago. All things know. All things know. We sold our clothes to the state. I don't mind. I don't mind. I made a lot of mistakes in my mind. In my mind. May 15th, 1991. One month later. Raven! Over here, by the bar seating. Have a seat. I got the menus already. This is one of my favorite places. It's usually super crowded, but not right now. The upside of working late shifts is getting to beat all of the crowds while everybody else is at the office. Oh, I don't need the menu. I already know that I'm gonna get the blackberry pie. I absolutely will be having dessert for breakfast. <laughs> no one can stop me. I'm a menace. <laughs> so, I'm getting Paloma for the week this Friday. Michelle is dropping her off in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, Paloma's heard me talk about you. She wants to meet you. I mean, if you don't think that would be weird or anything. <laughs> okay, perfect. How are we doing today? Welcome to the Black Bear Den. Can I get you started with your order? I'll have a coffee and uh... Oh, let me guess. Cherry pie? Or blueberry pie? <laughs> no, no, no. Blackberry pie today. Oh, that was my next guess. You know, we just added a peach cobbler to the menu. Limited time special while peaches are still in season. You might want to try that. Wait. How about you get the peach cobbler, and I get the blackberry pie? Then we can share. Okay, we'll have two coffees, a blackberry pie, and a peach cobbler, please. I'll bring that right out for you. Oh, guess what? My health insurance actually just approved an upgrade on my leg. 
prosthetic technology has come so far. <laughs> no way, I am not going to tell you how I lost my leg. Trust me, your mountain lion attack theory is a lot more interesting than the actual story. Oh yeah, the Cable new one is crazy high-tech. It has some kind of response point. sensors no, that react to we'll pressure. I might uh, actually be able to okay. run again with it. <laughs> Aren't the 90s crazy? I never would have thought the technology would have come this far. Spread out. Take your position. Oh, want to hear something funny? When Paloma's first baby tooth started coming loose, she asked me when her leg was going to fall off. <laughs> Raven? <laughs> you look like you were distracted for a second there. Um, yeah, I was just saying that... What? Get behind the bar? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Are, are we hiding from somebody? Right now? Raven, what is going on? No, you have to tell me what's happening, because you're actually starting to worry me. A second ago, you were staring off like you were looking at something, and now you're telling me that we have to hide behind the bar? Raven, what is it? Smile, Raven. Raven, Raven, are you okay? What do we do about these witnesses? Let them run. Focus on Raven. Raven? Why did they say your name? God, please tell me something. Lay cover fire. She might be armed. Keep her pinned down. Raven, no, I can't run. You know that. And I'm not leaving you here. What do we do? I'm going in. I'll get this finished quickly. If she tries to run, shoot her in the back. Bottles? Uh, yeah, okay, bottles. Um, here. What are you gonna do with them? Ah! My eyes! I can't see! Where are you, bitch? Ah! Shoot her! Fucking shoot her! Don't let her take Morgan's gun! What the hell was that? Are you... are you a... Uh... Wait, where are you going? There she is! Get down, she took Morgan's gun! <laughs> Fucking bitch. I'm gonna kill ya. Shoot her, goddammit! Get her off me! Stop! Moving, otherwise I might end up shooting you! Francine, she's reaching for my backup gun. Shoot her now! You really think you're tough, huh? Shit! Raven, you... You... Fucking traitor! You shouldn't even be alive! You were supposed to die when Crow got taken. What? What was that? How did those people know your name? Why? Why were they after you? Who? What are you? Nobody move! Hands above your head! You're under arrest. You'll be apprehended and held in the custody at the Coconino County Jail. Wait, wait. It was self-defense, I swear. I saw everything. Please let her explain. Sir, take a seat. This is a triple homicide. We need to arrest her either way. But she- if the prosecutor finds that this was likely a case of self-defense, we can release her for the remainder of the investigation. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, you will be assigned one by the county. Do you understand your rights?
Let her in. Have a seat. You ready to talk? Good. My name is Special Agent Swanson. I'm with the FBI. No need to introduce yourself. I already know who you are. I'm involved in the investigation against the Paramilitary Enforcement Service Corporation, or Para-M as you know them. Don't worry, this isn't an interrogation. We filed a recommendation to the prosecutor to determine the incident yesterday as a likely case of self-defense. Your charges will likely be dropped at your pretrial, and we'll have you released without the need to post bail. I want to ask you some questions about your attacker. We gathered information on them and the connection they have to you is clear. It appears your witness protection has been compromised. We don't know how, but... Uh, Agent Swanson? The defense attorney is here and wants to be present. When would she assigned a defense attorney? No, it's Luke Williams, the defense attorney for Para-M. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? <sighs> Fine. Let him in. Hey, Agent Swanson. I haven't seen you since the last trial date. How have you been? The hell do you want, Williams? <laughs> do I need to remind you? Since your guys have been so slow and ineffective with providing counsel with legal discovery, the judge signed an order allowing me to be present during any interview, interrogation, or questioning of anyone involved in the trial. This isn't about the Para-M trial. Oh? Are you sure about that? Because I don't think the judge would agree. Miss Raven is still a key witness in the Para-M trial. If you defy the judge's order to allow me to be present at this interview, it would look so good for me in court. I can leave now if you want. <sighs> Fine, you can stay. Fucking weasel. Hey, being a weasel pays pretty well. Do you like my new Rolex? Sure, Luke, sure. I'm sure the venture capital investors keeping Param on life support pay great, but I think I'll focus on the matter at hand. <clears throat> Raven, as you were saying, we identified the three attackers at the Black Bear Den restaurant. All three of them were formal lethal operators employed by the Param Corporation. All of them were previously stationed in San Sequestro. Formally employed. The key word is formally. Para-M hasn't had lethal operators in San Sequestro since 1987. And all of those alleged attackers haven't been employed by Para-M in years. <sighs> Didn't I tell you not to interfere? <laughs> I'm just making sure you don't end up misleading a key witness in the trial against Para-M. Fine. Three former lethal operators were present at the attack. Did you recognize any of them? Only one. So, did this Francine Diaz you recognize have access to personal information about you during your time together at Param? I'm asking because I want to see if we can find a lead on how they found and identified you. If it turns out they were operating under their own volition, then this case is closed. But if they were sent by someone else you could be in danger of being targeted again. Allegedly targeted. Listen, Raven. I spoke to the agent managing your witness protection. I have a couple of things for you. That is a concealed carry permit. It's been approved by the federal judge and valid in any state regardless of local laws. I say any state because I have something else for you. That's a flight voucher. Valid with any of the airlines listed on it. I'm not saying you have to accept the offer, but relocating your witness protection to another state might be your only option to keep you from being targeted again. Chicago and San Sequestro are out of the question, but the rest of the country is open to you. There's no rush. Look, that voucher won't be authorized until we assign a flight to it. So take your time deciding whether or not you choose to use it. But if and when you are ready, give us a call and we'll assign you a flight immediately and send you to wherever you choose to relocate. Yes, unless you have some more information you'd like to share, you're free to go, Raven. Oh, and Luke, get the fuck out of my office.
Raven? Oh my god, you're okay. Come here. <sighs> oh, thank god they let you out. I was worried about you all day. I thought... God, I thought things were going to turn out so much worse. Um, me? I'm... Uh, I'm okay. I could be better. I'm uh, still a little shaken about everything that happened yesterday. Um, I really don't know how to deal with it, but... Do you, uh, do you just want to come inside? Okay. So, what happened to you after they arrested you? I just wanted to see how you were doing. I... God. I've been replaying what happened in my head over and over again since it happened. I don't know what to think of it. I mean, why did they... How did you... Uh... God, I'm not making any sense, am I? I'm sorry. I don't even know how I'm supposed to talk about this. But... Those people... They knew who you were. They said your name. Is there something... Is there something about you that I should know? You worked for Para M? <sighs> Please tell me that you were a desk clerk or something. Yeah, I should have figured that you were a lethal operator. <sighs> well, at least it's over now, right? You're going to be safe, right? Because I care about you. I want you to be safe. I can't imagine how I'd react if... You know, if... If things had gone bad back there. No. Paloma doesn't know what happened. But I did talk to my ex-wife about it. We decided it's best not to tell her what happened right now. We don't want her to be scared for me. Um, one second. Let me get the door. Hi, Ivan. Michelle? Paloma? Um, what are you two doing here? There was something I wanted to ask you. Can we come in? Um, sure. And Paloma, <laughs> get up here, you little rascal! <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, little birdie? Good! Look, Daddy! My first baby tooth finally fell out! Well, aren't you a big girl? <laughs> You're growing up so quick! Slow down, Paloma. You're getting too big. <laughs> so, um, Michelle, what's going on? Did you want to ask if I could take Paloma a little early this week or something? Oh, by the way, that's Raven over there. Oh, that's her? Hi, I'm Michelle. You've probably heard about me already. Oh, you're Raven? Daddy talks about you all the time when you're not around. He thinks you're really pretty. Okay, Paloma. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> so, Michelle, what did you want to ask? I... I actually came to ask where she was. I wanted to talk to her about something. Oh. Um, <clears throat> is it about, you know... Yes. We shouldn't talk about it in front of Paloma, though. Why don't you take her into another room and play with her for a bit? I was hoping to have this conversation in private, anyway. Okay, just promise me you won't make this about... Never mind. I'll go play with Paloma. I'll see you in a bit. Hey, Birdie. You want to go say hi to Fish in Purple? Yes! <laughs> <sighs> hi, Raven. Nice to meet you. I... <sighs> God... I should just get to the point, shouldn't I? Ivan told me what happened. He said you killed those people. I'm not saying what you did wasn't justified, but he also told me that they knew who you were. I'm saying this because I don't know you. And I don't know what you're involving my family in, and I just want to know. I almost had a heart attack when I saw what happened on the news. 
I know Ivan goes to the Black Bear all the time, and I was worried to death until he called and told me he was okay. Why were those people there? Fine. Don't tell me then. Look, I don't know you or what you're about, but... I think you should stay away from Ivan. No, it's not like that. Look, Ivan and I are on good terms, but we just wanted different things out of life, and we went our separate ways. The only reason I am still in Arizona at all is because we have joint custody of Paloma. It's over. I've... <sighs> I've accepted that. I moved on. I'm not trying to get you out of the way. Are you really still asking me why? What happened yesterday was because of you. It might not have been your choice, but Ivan was nearly shot just because he was around you. What if he had died? What if Paloma had been there? Huh? What would have happened then? Would you just be shrugging your shoulders at me like it was nothing? Believe me when I say I want you out of his life. <sighs> Look, you probably think I'm the biggest bitch in the world right now, but I don't think I'll be able to sleep at night just knowing you're around him. How are you not getting it? What the fuck are you, anyway? Three people died just yesterday. You killed them, and you're just sitting here with this blank face like it was nothing. Like it's an everyday thing for you. Do you not feel anything? Are you even capable of that? No, no. I don't want to hear you talk back to me. This conversation is over. Think about what I told you. Ivan, we're finished. It's time for us to leave. Oh, that was quick. Come on, Paloma. Mommy's taking you home. Huh? Already? When will I get to see Daddy again? You'll see Daddy on Friday. Come on, let's leave. Bye, Daddy! Bye, sweetie. See you soon. So, what was that about? If it's private... I understand. Um, did you, uh, did you want to stick around for a while longer, or...? That's fine. If you need to be alone right now, I get it. But remember, if you need anything, I'm always just across the street, okay? Take care. So, Michelle is going to stop by tonight to drop off Paloma, but that's not for another few more hours. What do you want to do until then? Oh, we can do whatever you want. You just tell me. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about, but you're going to have to tell me. That sounded like Michelle's car horn. Um, maybe she's here early to drop off Paloma. Um, I'll go check just in case, okay? You want to come with me? I think Paloma would like to say hi. Oh, um, never mind. That's not Michelle's car. Uh, it looks like they're waiting for somebody, though. Hello? Hello? Who are you? Smile, Raven. <laughs> Help me. Help me, Raven. I'm bleeding. Uh. 
I'm gonna be okay, right? I'm gonna be okay, right? Ivan? Ivan! Ivan? Please wake up! Ivan! because of you. The bullet wasn't for him. You were the one that was supposed to die. It should have been you that died. Special Agent Swanson speaking. Hello, Raven. Very well. We'll make a call and authorize your flight voucher. Is there any place in particular you have in mind? Anywhere, huh? Hmm. Look, we have a witness protection service available in Boulder, Colorado. We can get you on the next flight booked. We'll be in touch with you when you arrive. Witness protection services will settle all your affairs in Flagstaff for you on your behalf. And Raven. Take only what you need and get ready to leave as quickly as possible. It's for your own safety. We will send a shuttle from the airport to your address today. Witness protection will have everything else shipped out to you once you relocate. Best of luck to you, Raven. Oh, hey Raven. Um, sorry, I just woke up. I probably look like a mess. <laughs> uh, I'll look wide awake after I have some coffee, though. Um, did you want to come in and get some? Oh, I see. What did you want to tell me? Raven? What's the matter? You're freezing up. You're leaving. So, when are you coming back? I'm guessing you just need a place to lie low for a while or something. Right? Oh. Witness protection. I guess that means I won't get to know where you're going or what your new phone number is going to be. Will I? I... I just... Is there not a way for them to make an exception? You seriously can't talk to anybody? Because maybe I'm stupid, and maybe I'm crazy, but I already had a feeling that maybe something bad was following you. But I still wanted you around, okay? Am, am I wrong for thinking that? What made you make this decision so quickly? Is there no way that we can talk about it and try and find another way? No, I wasn't scared when you told me that you were a lethal op. I was just confused and I didn't know how to react because everything was getting dropped on me so fast. And now before I've even had a second to breathe, I find out that you're just disappearing forever in a, in a snap. I, I was just starting to picture things going in a different direction. I thought that maybe something was... Never mind. I'm stupid for thinking that something good was just gonna come to me out of the blue. I understand why you have to go. Best of luck in your new life. I'll miss the conversations we had. I really will. Don't think I'll forget about you. Is that your ride? Goodbye, Raven. Hey, before you go, maybe one day when this is all over, 
you can find me again. Even if I don't live at this address anymore. There's a little outpost in the forest that I'll never ever leave. Meet me there, okay? If you still want to. Hey, is this the right address? I'm looking for a raven to take to the Pulliam Airport. Looks like it's time to say goodbye. Safe travels, Raven. So, are you going on vacation or something? All right, I'll take or something. Are you okay, ma'am? It looks like something's upsetting you. I can pull over if you want to take a breather. All right, straight to the airport. No looking back. Checking in for your flight? I'll take your passport, please. Oh, and it looks like you're using a flight voucher for a ticket. I'm just going to get some paperwork out for you. We're going to need your signature. Just sign down here to confirm the flight the voucher is being used for. Oh, almost forgot. Here's a pen for you to sign with. Is this what will finally make you free? If I had a pen that could write fate, I would give your story a happy ending. Ma'am, your signature, please? You're holding off the line. I cannot write it for you. The pen is in your hands. Ma'am, can I help you? Ma'am, where are you going? You again. Need a ride? Alright, I'll take you right back in no time. See you, lady. Hello? Who is it? Raven? You came back? Oh, are my eyes red? <laughs> um, it was nothing. Uh, don't worry. Um, why did you come back? Please don't say it was for me. I... I know why you had to go. I wasn't happy about it, but... I don't want to be the reason that you end up in danger. I was just wrapped up in this idea that maybe... Maybe you were meant to come to me? Like, it was fate or something? I know. Stupid. I'm having some feelings I never thought I would have to deal with again. After my divorce, I thought that I just, you know, wasn't meant for that kind of love. And I was fine with it. I was happy. I had my forest. I had my daughter. I had my pet birds. I had a life that I liked, and I... I didn't feel like I was missing anything. And then I saw you, and suddenly I started thinking that maybe... Maybe something was supposed to happen. Because everything felt perfect. 
As soon as you went home after that day in the forest, I started imagining... God, why am I even saying this? I... I started imagining kissing you, and holding your hand, and you laying your head on my shoulder and falling asleep by my side. When you told me you had to leave, I went through the whole emotional roller coaster of just accepting that that fantasy was never gonna happen. And now. Shit. It might still never happen, but. But I want you so bad I can't hide it anymore. We don't have to think about what comes next. Right now, I just want to kiss you. May 18th, 1991. Five weeks later. Hello. Checking in? Dr. Harrison is in his office. He's ready to see you. Have a seat, Raven. This is a pleasant surprise. I was told by Witness Protection Services that you would be leaving. <sighs> I thought it would be a shame to see you go when you were only just beginning to finally make progress. I'm sure we have plenty to talk about. I heard the news of the, uh, incident, but I only heard the dry version that came from the police report. Oh, sorry, I should have reminded you to please silence your pager. I is that the, uh, Ivan I've heard so much about? <laughs> Never mind then. You'll have time to call whoever it was back later. Now, before we discuss the incident, is there anything you'd like to tell me about your present emotional state? I'm asking because I want to know how to approach this. Typically people end up very emotionally numb and inexpressive shortly after surviving an event that echoes their past traumas. But you seem to be in a... and forgive me if I'm wrong, uh, an almost... Good mood. <laughs> all right, all right. More than almost good, then. An actually good mood. That's wonderful. Come to think of it, I can't think of the last time I saw you smiling or, or telling jokes like this. <laughs> Seeing you in such a good mood almost makes me want to call today's session off and send you on your way. I'd hate to ruin the atmosphere by bringing up a stressful event. Very well. I trust you. Now, could you describe the incident from your point of view? Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's surprising. What do you think it was that made you feel so, as you put it, alive during the incident? Was it the adrenaline? Does a part of you miss your time as a lethal operator? Purpose. Do you mean that in the heroic sort of sense? Or was it because of who you were defending by fighting? Someone worth dying for. Hmm. Um, are you falling in love with him? <coughs> uh, I'm sorry. I said that in a terribly unprofessional way. I promise I have a legitimate reason to ask... As a therapist, hearing you describe love as something worth dying for is a bit of a concern to me. How about something worth living for? There are other ways to show love besides self-sacrifice. I understand that your history is unique, but it's common for people who are used to suffering to believe they don't deserve happiness unless they've first suffered for someone else. Has he said anything to make you feel that way? Like you have to sacrifice yourself in order to deserve the kindness he gives you? In that case, relax, and stop worrying about whether or not you deserve him. After everything you've been through, it might feel like simple forms of happiness must come at a cost. 
But that's not true. Sometimes it's as simple as believing you deserve the kindness that others offer freely. Very well, Raven. I'll see you next month. Take care. We're gonna send you away. But you wouldn't like that, would you, Mr. Egg Yolk? <laughs> you like it better here, don't you? <laughs> of course you do, little man. Little man. Oh, <laughs> Raven, you're back. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I've been waiting all afternoon for you to come back. Can you blame me? <laughs> so how was your visit with Dr. Harrison? Did you talk to him about me? Did you tell him all about how mean and nasty I am? <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, check this out. I brought something with me. I have a friend who works for the MPAA, and he got me a VHS copy of this two months before it comes out in theaters. It's Terminator 2. I mean, I mean, yeah, this is technically illegal. <laughs> so don't let those FBI agents you talk to know about it, okay? <laughs> what? You didn't think I have a dark side? <laughs> I'm not above breaking the law. <laughs> I bet you didn't know I was so dangerous. <laughs> oh, um, I'll give you a second. Wanna call them back? I can wait. Um, no, I don't recognize that number either. Wanna ignore it, or... Yeah, I think that sounds a lot better, too. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go get some popcorn ready. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, did you want me to get you a drink or something? Is that that number again? Sounds pretty urgent. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger can wait. Go ahead, call them, uh, whoever it is. Please tell me this is who I think it is. Yes, it's Luke. Uh, Luke Williams. From the legal team at Paraham. Wait, wait, wait! Don't hang up! Don't hang up! Look, I promise this isn't me trying to bribe you out of testifying or... or whatever you think. Please, don't hang up. I'm on speaker! Who's listening? Look, I'm just being careful. I'm not even sure I should be talking about what I want to talk about over the phone. I don't know if someone has the phone tapped. No, I'm not talking about the FBI. I'm talking about... God. Look, I don't want to talk about this on the phone. I want to meet you in person. Don't hang up, don't hang up! Look... If you think this is a trap, you don't have to come alone. There's a lumber processing plant in Sedona right off the rodeo exit of Highway 89. Meet me there. Bring whoever you want with you. Just promise that they don't have anything to do with... Param. Look, I've already said too much, but I'm on your side, I swear. Param isn't exactly happy with me. We're both in danger. I need your help and you need mine. 
I'll tell you more when we have a safe place to talk. I'll see you there. I'm sorry, uh, have you ever talked to that person before? I'm really confused. Right, I think I follow. Did he get your phone number from the court records or something? I'm just saying, that's kind of scary. If the defense attorney from Para M has access to that information on you, who knows what other people could have dug it up. Do you think we should go? I'm nervous. We don't have to do anything he says. I don't care what he told you. He's not on your side as long as he's still working for them. Right. If he is right that you're both in danger, then he would be the only one who knows. Do you think we should go with someone? Right. Uh, we can do that too. <clears throat> um, want to take my car? Whatever this is about, we should be careful. I don't know. I don't think that a lawyer would do anything outright violent. They wouldn't be stupid enough to let their squeaky clean front get his hands dirty. But I do expect him to be up to something shady. Lawyers always are, and this is Para M we're talking about. You're supposed to fly out to San Sequestro in a couple weeks for a trial testimony, right? I'm guessing they're getting desperate. Maybe they really have turned on their own lawyer, but maybe he's trying to get your trust to find information to use against you. Just promise me you won't answer any of his questions, okay? All right, and I'll keep my mouth shut too. Where is he? It doesn't look like anyone is here. Over here! Jesus! You scared the shit out of me! Sorry for hiding in the alleyway. I couldn't risk being seen. They might be watching right now. They? As in Para M? And you are? None of your concern. Fine. I was here to speak to her anyhow. Raven, look. <sighs> Para M isn't too optimistic about the next trial date. I shouldn't say anything else, but I need to get away from them. They're getting desperate and they're not happy with me, and I know what they do to people who aren't happy with them. Look, I don't want to say anything else. Just follow me. No way are we going in there. Look, this is a safe place. One of the investors of Para M owns it. He has a periodically chat for microphones and other surveillance bugs. He uses it on days that is closed to have secret meetings where he knows nothing will be recorded. Sounds like a guy who's definitely innocent. Yeah, I know. Look, now that I'm not on their side anymore, I think it's safe for me to say that they're guilty as fuck. You happy? Just follow me. This is the one place I know they won't record us. Raven, should we? It's up to you. Okay, let's do it. Looks like you have some serious hardware in here. Yeah, the board of investors chose this place because they can turn on the industrial equipment to drown out the voices if they're really paranoid that they're being recorded. Raven, should we keep going along with this? Okay. Right up these stairs, there's a conference room that should give us what we need. There. We made it to your secret conference room. Now tell her what you were going to tell her. And make it straightforward. No sleazy lawyer bullshit. I know. <sighs> okay, listen, Raven. I was planning on going into witness protection, too. I don't know when, but sometime before the trial. Maybe even as soon as tomorrow. 
Para M has been scraping by on capital investment from people. Seriously bad people who are counting on Para M returning to the value it had in 1987. In just a few months, Congress is voting on whether or not to repeal the law that made lethal operation legal in the first place. If any of the defendants in the Para M trial are found guilty, it's going to be a disaster for them. They'll have no chance but to liquidate the company, and some very bad people with a lot of money are going to be very mad at me for failing them. That and over 7,000 lethal operators nationwide are going to be out of a job. And they're going to be pissed. Yeah, lethal ops with nowhere to go have already retaliated before. Like those people who attacked you. I swear, I see everything inside and out of Para-M, and I didn't see any of those people on any current records. They weren't sent by us. <laughs> Why should we believe you? Look, I understand why neither of you trust me, but I'm here to give you as much dirt on Para-M as possible before I disappear forever. I'll answer any questions you have. No sneaky lawyer talk, just straight up answers. There are a ton of investors. The biggest shareholders are publicly recorded, but there's one that's off the books. His name is... Zanaris, but I'm not even sure that's his real name. He's more than a businessman. He's like a villain or something. I've never even seen him in person. But the moment Louis Berglund's shares went up for grabs, he snatched them up through some shell company that he keeps in the name of some clean frontman. He only seemed like he was interested in the supergenet lab in the old San Sequestro HQ at first, but he got more involved over time. Now he controls everything, and no one knows what moves he makes. Not even me. Everything is done off the books. So, hypothetically... If he was the one to send those lethals that went to kill Raven, not even you would have known about it, right? I mean, I never thought of it that way. Okay, what else should we know? Where does his money even come from? Illegal activity. More crimes than I could possibly list. He keeps all his underground operations separate from Para-M. But I'm sure if you could link him to the shell company he used to buy corporate equity in Para-M, it would be over for both him and every business he's got his hands on. How the hell are we supposed to do that? Look, I don't know. I just thought I owed Raven some help. Besides, the sooner Para-M and its investors get shut down, the sooner I can be safe. I'm sure that I'm next on the target list, and if someone doesn't take them down, they're going to kill me. I'm a weasel, I know. I'm a lawyer for the most fucked up corporation in America. But that doesn't mean I'm just going to leave without at least helping you out a little. Raven? What do you see? It's just a bird. Please, I'm begging you to take what I'm saying seriously. Otherwise, we're both dead. Raven? Raven? Did you see something? Everyone out. Let's make this quick and quiet. Luke? Do you know who those people down there are? Oh no. Those are lethal operators. No. No, you set us up! You son of a bitch! No! No, look. There's two reasons they might be here. And those are? Either they're here to have a meeting where they can't be recorded, or they're here for me. They might have seen me waiting, I don't know. They're going to kill me. They sure do have a lot of guns for people who came for a meeting, so I'm guessing it's the latter. But how do we know that they're not just here for Raven? Look, fuck, I don't know, I don't know. But I do know that if they came for one of us, they're going to kill all of us. Is there a way out? What do we do? We can try and sneak out through the back. It's locked, but I have a key. I still can't guarantee that we won't have to fight our way out of here. <sighs> Raven, listen to me. At least two of them have elite lethal kits. They're bulletproof except for armor-piercing rounds and high-caliber rifles. 
try to avoid them. Some of them may have armor-piercing weapons that we can capture. Or maybe we can find a way to remove their armor if they come too close. I won't be able to help you. I don't have a gun and I'm no good with them anyway. I'm still not convinced that you weren't in on this. If I sent them, do you think I'd be given strategic advice on how to kill them? Listen, I already knew that Para M wanted to kill me. Don't you get it? Okay. Raven, it's up to you. Do you hear them? It sounds like they're splitting up and looking for us. Raven, are you ready? I think I heard them in here. Don't hold fire. Reach the door and start shooting. Don't rush out to them. Wait for them to come to us. Breaching in three, two, one. the back way out. Someone is bound to have heard those gunshots and they'll be coming quick. There! Across the catwalk! Up there! Shoot them! Get back! E1 to L3. They're upstairs on the north catwalk. Surround them! Shit! Those bullets didn't do anything! You hit them, right? What do we do? We keep going. There's more concealment through the upper hallways than the warehouse. We can dodge them before they surround us. Down these stairs! Wait, stop. I hear something. Copy. Securing possible exit route. They're here. Contact! Get behind the wall! Are you hit? Oh my god. They have bulletproof armor. What do we do? I... Okay. Surrender your weapons. Raven, back me up. <laughs> I'm on her. I can take her helmet off. Get off of me. Requesting backup at the south <laughs> corridor. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Raven. Okay, let's go. Luke, you lead the way. This way, across the lumber processing yard. Target sighted. Fire! Get down! Behind that machine! Approaching the target. Lay cover fire! Yes, sir! Ugh. The one that's coming at us is bulletproof. We're in trouble. Raven, stay down. Go around the other side of our cover. Just trust me. Luke. How do I turn this thing on? What? Where is Raven? Raven, now! Push! Push now! Was that all of them? Are you okay, Raven? You look exhausted. Okay. Just tired. Not hurt. That's good. They hit me. But they only got my prosthetic leg. Lucky, huh? I can't move without limping. <laughs> At least that's better than losing my other leg, huh? We should call the police. Right. Right. Before we do, we need to make sure we get all the details straight. A lot happened, but we need to make sure that every detail is accounted for. Um, Luke? What are you doing to that body? Checking this body to see if there are any signs that they were sent directly by Para M. There's still a possibility that they were operating independently. They might belong to a separate organization entirely. I 
recognized this one's name from our records, but he hasn't worked for Para M in years. Not since the San Sequestro branch closed in 1987. So what does that mean? A rogue faction wanted revenge on Raven, possibly even revenge on the Para M Corporation too, after losing their livelihoods when the San Sequestro HQ shut down. And we should tell the police that? But how do we know for sure? I'm sure detectives will be able to figure out the details when they get here. Here's what we tell them. A rogue faction of Ed's Para-M lethal ops tracked us down by unknown means and tried to assassinate both Raven and I in one swoop. They came heavily armed, knowing Raven would fight back. Raven fought back valiantly, defending both us and herself. Right. <sighs> Unfortunately, despite her heroic efforts, she died of her injuries before help could arrive. Just what the hell are you talking about? I said Raven doesn't make it. No! Raven! Is this how your story ends? Yes, you are dying, but it is not over yet. You would see me again if you let go now, but your story would end before it was even written. Dying is easy, surviving is much harder. I have many regrets, loving you is not one of them. Keeping you from meeting the same fate that I did is not one of them. Because I knew then, as I know now, that your story had not yet finished. I do not know how it ends, but I know that you have the strength to finish writing it. Fly. Listen, I know you're upset, but I'm doing you a favor here. Just tell me you'll play along and tell the police story exactly the way I told you. Fuck you, you son of a bitch! Do you think I'm gonna help you and your sick, twisted fucking bosses at Para M? Do you want your daughter to live to see her sixth birthday? Huh? Then I suggest you shut the fuck up and recite my version of the story word for fucking word. I... I... Yes or no? You know I can shoot you right now, right? So give me an answer! I can't. I can't do what you tell me. I can't. I just can't. Kill me if you want to. Uh, Raven? How are you alive? No bother. I can still get the job done. You're too tired to fight. You're exhausted and already bleeding out. But you're welcome to try me. I was going to kill you painlessly, but you're making this very difficult for me. Now I just have to put you down for long enough to pick up my gun. Not gonna happen. I'm not scared of you. You know there are consequences to messing with us. Besides, you don't have what it takes to shoot. Uh, 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 uh. This, uh, this won't save her. She's already done for. You're a bad liar. Raven? Raven? Are you still with me? Can you hear me? Please, please just hold on a little bit longer. I can apply pressure where you're bleeding. There must be some way to get help. Just, just breathe. 
please. Please just keep breathing. Please stay with me. Freeze! Police! Hands up! Jesus Christ. What happened here? Please, please get an ambulance. She needs to get to a hospital. Paramedics were already dispatched. They're coming right behind us. Raven, can you still hear me? Please say something, Raven. She's stable enough to receive guests. We think she might be ready for discharge soon, but be careful with her. She still hasn't fully recovered. I will. Thank you. Right this way. Raven? Are you awake? Raven! <laughs> Oh, did I squeeze you too tight? Oh my god, sorry, sorry. Here, I can think of something more gentle. I'll give you two some privacy. I'll be back later after I've spoken to her doctor. I just got back from San Sequestro. They had me testify about what happened the week before last. Did you hear the news? Really? It's been all over the news today. Look, hand me that remote. It's the trial the whole country has been watching. The Paramilitary Enforcement Services Corporation, DBA Para-M, has been ordered by a judge of the San Sequestro Superior Court to cease all operation and liquidate all of its assets. All 67 defendants in the trial, including executive board members, private equity investors, and various co-conspirators, have all been found guilty of charges including conspiracy, treason, public records fraud, witness intimidation, murder, and a litany of other felonies. The court has ordered all funds from the liquidation of the corporation to be seized and used to pay restitution and lawsuit settlements. More on the story as it develops. In lighter news, Cooking with Shuby has become a surprise hit, rising to the number one spot in primetime TV ratings. We all love that silly dog, don't we? It's finally over. Para M is gone. <laughs> what comes next? Your whole life. Um, <clears throat> um, our whole life. If you still want to stay here, that is. Now that you don't have to be in witness protection anymore. I think I like that. I just got the green light from the doctor. She's ready to be discharged. Come on, Raven. Let's go. So, where do you want to go first? I couldn't think of a better place. Here we are. You know, I haven't gotten to take you to the lake yet, have I? Oh, and that must be Michelle with Paloma. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Michelle. Um, um, hello, Raven. Daddy! Hey there, little birdie. Hi, Miss Raven. I'll come by Monday and pick Paloma up. You two, stay safe, okay? <laughs> yeah, I think we've gotten into enough trouble for a whole lifetime. <laughs> okay, I'll hold you to it. Oh, and Raven, I understand. I'm not mad at you, even after everything. See you around. <laughs> Can I catch a fish just like you showed me? A fishy pole? <laughs> sure you can. Just make sure to let it go back into the water once you catch it, okay? Okay, Daddy. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, I'll go help her in a minute when she realizes she doesn't have any bait on that line. <sighs> Here, lay down with me. You know, now that this is all over, you don't have to use your witness protection identity anymore, do you? Come to think of it, you've never told me your original name. What's your name anyway? Huh. I never would have guessed that. Should I call you that from now on? You're right. That name belongs to an old life. And after all, I like Raven. <laughs> I like someone named Raven. <laughs> but it's a secret. <laughs> Huh? Um, what does that mean? Uh, that thing you just said. It sounded poetic, but I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean. I like the sound of it. Until the next sunrise. Until the next sunrise. 